What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Wildcat Cave. I hope everyone has had a great Christmas and is looking forward to a big 2023. Before we enter the new year, Kentucky football has tied up some loose ends, and we still have one more game to play before they get to ring in the new year and really begin their offseason. Recently, they picked up some big-time transfers in the portal, and we still have a bowl game to play. Now, this will probably be my last football video for a while, so I'm going to try to make it a good one, and we will end 2022 with a bang. Really quick, guys, I have to say I relaunched this channel just a hair over two months ago, and since then we have grown almost 100 subscribers, and I want you guys to know that that means the world to me. I post less than I used to on the channel, and we're still growing, and that is awesome. Please keep subscribing and keep this thing going. Now let's talk a little Kentucky football. So let's start here with some of the players that are transferring out. At running back, we have Cavassier Smoke and Mike Drennan. Both of those guys are guys that saw minutes, Smoke obviously being the backup to C-Rod, and Mike Drennan, a.k.a. Donut, uh, just seeing playing time sparingly. Both guys were good and productive. Nobody I think we're really going to miss um, with some of the guys we're bringing in and some of the guys that are returning. I think we're going to be okay without these guys. I wish them nothing but the best. They've been great for our program and backing up C-Rod, um, but I understand they want more playing time. And with the guys we have and that are coming in, they're just not going to see it here. At wide receiver, uh, we have quite a few leaving. We have Chauncey Magwood, Demarcus Harris, Chris Lewis, Rashawn Lewis, and Tay-Tay Crooms all exiting uh, in the wide receiver room. I think the writing is kind of on the wall when you have guys like Dane Key, Barry on Brown, Tavion Robinson probably coming back, along with some um, freshmen that they're really excited about and guys that are returning. Um, I just think the writing was on the wall for them. They want to be somewhere where they can be the guy. So, again, no hard feelings. Um, but when you get recruited over and younger guys are playing ahead of you, it's probably time for you to go ahead and try to find somewhere else to make a name for yourself. At tight end, we are losing Keaton Upshaw. Been a really, really productive guy in the past for Kentucky. Unfortunately, it just turns out that, again, he's been recruited over. These young guys in Caddis and uh, Dingle, they're stepping up and they're just outplaying Upshaw. He was hurt last year uh, with some injury, came back this year, and just got passed up in the depth chart. I think he can go be really productive somewhere. I just don't think it's going to be Kentucky. And then finally, Keontae Goodwin, um, the offensive lineman, the five-star. Um, rumor has it that he may not actually transfer. He's just in the portal feeling out his options, and he may come back to Kentucky next year, which would be really good. You know, this dude's a five-star. I think he didn't gain as much strength as they wanted him to. They didn't. He didn't lose as much weight as they had hoped. Um, and so he he played, but he didn't see a ton of playing time. I, I could see a world where he comes back and contributes next year. If not, again, I wish this guy the best. He's a really good player, and he will be a really good player. But when you're playing in Kentucky that's known for their offensive line, it's hard to get playing time, especially as a freshman in the SEC. Now, overall, all of these guys saw playing time. It's like these are a bunch of bench riders. Um, but... All in all, no real significant pieces were lost. These are all guys that can contribute other places, maybe at smaller colleges, um, you know, the, like Eastern and Northern, if they had a football team, Western, places like that I think would be good landing spots for all of these guys. Um, maybe with the exception of Keontae Goodwin, he could go to another big-time school. But overall, Kentucky didn't lose a whole lot as far as production on the field here but they are gaining a lot in production on the field. They have a bunch of guys coming in, a bunch of high-level talent. At offensive line, they have Tanner Bowles. He's a 6'5", 280-pound guard from Alabama. He played in every single game for Alabama, so you know he's good. He started he started for a potential national championship-level team, um, so we're, this should add some beef to our offensive line up front. He plays guard, so it'll add another good interior piece for the Cats. Marcus Cox, a 6'6", 310-pound tackle from Northern Illinois. Um, he played against Kentucky this year, obviously. Again, um, allowing him to come in and play tackle for you is going to free other guys up to play a more natural spot. Um, Kentucky does have a lot of guys returning at the offensive line this year. They have Horsey and Cox and Flax all coming back. These additions with Bowles and Cox is going to allow guys to play their more natural position. Um, Bowles is going to be a good or even better replacement for Tayshawn Manning, who is graduating. Cox, uh, 
playing left tackle, like I said, will allow Horsey to move to guard, which is where he's more comfortable. It's where he's normally played, and he only played tackle out of necessity for the Cats because they needed somebody to step up, and he was the guy. Overall, bringing these two guys in, taking into consideration everything you lose, I think overall this is an upgrade with the offensive line, especially when you consider the guys coming back from this year are going to be bigger and stronger than they were before. Now at corner, you have a couple guys coming in. Number one is J.Q. Hardaway. He's 6'3", coming out of Cincinnati. He was a four-star out of high school. A guy Kentucky really, really wanted and they pursued heavily out of high school. He is coming in, probably going to be an immediate impact player for the Cats. And the other guy is Jansen Dunn, a 6'2", corner from Ohio State. Four-star, again, coming out of high school. He's actually from Bowling Green. Um, so a Kentucky kid coming back home to play for the Cats. His senior year in high school, he was the number two overall player in the state. Um, these guys coming in, along with Vito Tisdale coming back, Alex Safari uh, moving up, Jordan Lovick moving up at safety. Um, I think this is going to make for a good replacement for losing Carrington Valentine. It's going to be hard to replace him for position. Um, I don't know if either of these guys are going to step up and immediately be what Valentine was this past year. But these two dudes that are really high – rated recruits and really good players couple them with up and coming young guys who've already somewhat proven themselves and I think our defensive backfield is looking okay now at running back we have Ray Davis coming in he's a thousand yard rusher out of Vanderbilt last season one of only four backs in the SEC to rush for a thousand yards so that's pretty good he averaged four and a half yards per rush and that's for Vanderbilt keep in mind this he's not running four and a half yards of rush for Alabama or for Georgia He's doing that for a really bad Vanderbilt team, admittedly one that beat Kentucky. But regardless, he he was a big-time rusher at a bad school. So I think if you put him on a team like Kentucky that's going to have a good offensive line and a good offense overall, um, I think he's a good replacement for C-Rod. I don't think he's going to be as good as C-Rod. It's hard to match the best running back the school's ever seen. Um, but I think he will be about as close as you could hope to replacing him. You couple that with Ramon Jefferson coming back off an injury last season, and you have two really good downhill running backs. Um, both have been proven at high levels. You throw in Lavelle Wright and Juton McClain, they add some pass catching options out of the backfield, and I think you're in business. Now, a quarterback, the one everybody wants to talk about, the big time transfer out of NC State, the six foot one, 215 pound man, Devin Leary the number one rated quarterback in all of the transfer portal. Last His last full season, he threw for 35 touchdowns and only five interceptions and 3,400 yards. That is a 7-to-1 touchdown-to-interception ratio. You're not going to find many guys in the country at any level that's going to throw up numbers like that. Um, this past season, he threw for 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns, and four interceptions in five games before his injury. Um, and but going into this past season, he wasn't in the Will Levis, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young conversation as far as being getting picked, but he was that next level of guy, a top three-round draft pick, um, like I said, before he got injured, and they were talking about him playing his way into a top two-round draft pick. So he's not Will Levis, but his he has that sort of same potential. Injuries are concerning for this guy. You know, obviously he missed a ton of last season because of an injury, I personally trust the staff to evaluate that for us. Um, if they have done their due diligence and they've done their research and they believe that this injury is something he can come back 100% from, I'm going to put my trust in Mark Stoops and our medical staff to say, yes, he's good to go um, and we're ready to put him on the field and we're not worried about him being hurt. Again, I don't think that he is that – I don't think his ceiling is as high as Will's maybe. He doesn't have Will Levis's huge arm but he is a lot more accurate than Will, in my opinion. Will was a lot of a gunslinger, throw it down the field and kind of let your receivers do it. Um, this guy, he's going to be precise. He's going to put the ball on the money every time. You see that with that 35-5 to 5 interception uh, to touchdown ratio. That's really good. That tells me he doesn't make bad decisions. He knows where he's going with the ball, and he delivers it accurately. He does have a better O-line than what he probably had at NC State to protect him, so he should have time in the pocket which again is going to, one, prevent injury, and two, allow him to deliver a catchable ball a lot more often. And he has great weapons. You have Dane Key and Barryon Brown and Tavion coming back, along with maybe Jordan Anthony and some of these other guys that the staff's really excited about. 
Now, overall, I think we've gained more than we've lost. We didn't really lose any key starters. Um, and overall, at, at each position, I don't think you really went down a whole lot, if any. Again, offensive line, I think, is better. The wide receiver room, you throw in uh, the speeds for Jordan Anthony, I think they're at least equal because everybody's coming back, maybe a touch better with some of these young guys stepping up. Um, running back, I think it is a slight depth like or a slight dip. Like I said, it's hard to replace the, the best running back this school's ever seen, um, but I do think the running back room is deeper now. I think Ramon Jefferson and um, Ray Davis might be a better combo than C-Rod and Smoke. Um, I think the depth um, and versatility with some pass catchers back there um, makes maybe a slight dip in running back, but overall you have more depth and you have more versatility, so I'm going to call it a pretty even wash. Quarterback, kind of the same deal. I'm calling it even. Um, Will obviously has the big arm, the big NFL body like you would want, but Devin Leary is a little better uh, decision-making and he's a little more accurate than Will was, and I think that makes up for his lack of arm strength. Not that he doesn't have a strong arm, He's just not Will Levis. Not many people are. And he has Cohen back. Um, you know, we saw what Will was able to do with Cohen a couple years ago. You put Devin Leary in that system with that offensive coordinator, and I think we're ready to roll. But we have all season to dissect and break down our roster and transfers and this and that. As for right now, we have one thing to look forward to, and it's the Music City Bowl coming up this Saturday, New Year's Eve at noon, against the Iowa Hawkeyes. On paper, I think Kentucky should have a slight advantage, in my opinion. But Vegas actually has Kentucky as a two-and-a-half-point dog with the lowest over-under in college football history. Now, we'll just talk a little bit about each of these teams. Kentucky um, obviously is not going to have Will Levis, Chris Rodriguez, or Carrington Valentine playing in this game. I think we're going to see Destin Wade, Kaya Sharon, and Deuce Hogan be splitting minutes at quarterback. Um, It seems like there might be leaning towards a package for Destin Wade to start the game, maybe like a a quote-unquote wildcat type of offense, even though I think he's more inept to throw the ball than a traditional wildcat quarterback. We saw Kai Sharon against South Carolina. The play calling was really conservative. I think when he gets minutes, you're not going to see as conservative as a play call. Um, And then Deuce Hogan, who we haven't seen much of this year, but I think he's going to get a solid run just because he came from Iowa. I think he'll want to play against his old team, and I think the staff is going to let him get his shot. Now, Vince Marrow and uh, I believe the wide receiver, Coach Woody, is going to be calling the plays, kind of a play call by committee there. I think Vince Marrow might be the, the main play caller, but Woody's going to have his input. Because of that, I do think we're going to play conservative. But, you know, Vince is the tight end coach, and you have Coach Woody at the wide receiver coach, and they're going to want to get their guys the ball. So even if we're not playing our starting quarterback, I don't see us being super conservative where we run 37 plays in a row. I think we are going to see him let these guys try to air the ball out, get the ball in Dane Key's hands and Barryon and Tavion and these other guys. You know, a lot of these times these bowl games are meant for younger guys, especially when you're not playing for a national championship. It's meant for these young guys to show what they got. Kentucky, in my opinion, again, has better athletes than Iowa. Couple that with a top 20 defense, and I like Kentucky's chances even if Vegas doesn't. Now, Iowa, on the other hand, they are not playing their starting quarterback, Spencer Pet- Petrus. Petrus? however you say it, Petros, or their backup, Alex Padilla. So they're going to be playing a third-string quarterback. Now, Iowa's offense with their starting quarterback ranks 130 out of 131. So even with their starting quarterback, they are not a great team at all, at least offensively. They only average about 17 points a game. They're not lighting up scoreboards. They're not blowing people away with their stats. But what's keeping them in games, what's got them to 7-5, and five, they have the fifth the fifth ranked defense in the nation. With both defenses being really good and both teams just missing their starting quarterback and in some cases their second string quarterback and some other key positions, it just comes down to which team has better playmakers and who can utilize them better. I think that's clearly Kentucky. I know Kentucky's offense was very lackluster this season, but if all else is equal, I'll take Dane Key, Barry on Brown, Tavion Robinson, Juton McClain, and those dudes against Iowa's defense, I think it is much more likely for our playmakers to score on that defense than it will be for their lesser playmakers to score on our defense. Our athletes on defense will be able to match their athletes on offense. I think it just comes down to will our playmakers consistently be better than their defense. 
don't get me wrong. Either way, I don't think this is a high-scoring game. I don't even think this game is going to be really fun to watch. I think it's going to be a slugfest, a lot of punts, and a lot of doing nothing. But nonetheless, I do think Kentucky squeezes out a win here. I will take the Cats 17-13, to effectively covering the spread, but still going under the lowest over-under in history, which is set at 31. If my score is correct, the total will be 30. Let me know your predictions down in the comments. I think this will be an interesting game at the least. That will wrap up this video, guys. Let me know your predictions for the bowl game, your feelings on how UK did in the portal, and if you're going to watch the football or the basketball game down in the comments. Like I said, this will probably be the last football video for a while as we are about to hit the heart of SEC basketball play. So I hope you all are ready to talk some Kentucky basketball. I know I am. I hope everyone enjoys the New Year's. Don't drink and drive, and I will see you guys next year in 2023. Go Cats!